Do you have a favorite tile pattern? I have at least four. Hi everyone, welcome to another design lesson video. In each video, I'm going to review some key design principles that you should keep in mind when you're thinking about renovating or decorating your space. So if you have a design dilemma and need some answers, feel free to comment in the section below with your questions. Your dilemma could become one of these design lesson videos right here. In the meantime, let's get to today's topic. Today, I'm going to review some of my favorite tile patterns. These aren't mosaics. I'm talking about individual tiles that need to be installed in different directions to get a specific look or pattern and to make new and interesting patterns. Maybe ones you haven't considered. Basic tile doesn't have to be so basic. A running brick pattern is a classic pattern where tiles are laid very much like brickwork. They can be offset by a third or half, meaning the tiles in each row shift to one side by either half a tile width or by a third. Here's an example of both. I think the reason this pattern is so popular is because it's so versatile. It can be used almost anywhere. The pattern is classic because it's practically expected when you think of tiles and tile patterns, especially when you consider something called subway tile. Subway tile is typically a rectangular shaped tile where its proportions are usually two times wider than it is taller. For instance, this is a three inch by six inch subway tile, but you can also get a subway tile with different proportions like this one. It's very popular in bathrooms. It provides a clean, even seamless look to large wall areas. This pattern runs along very smoothly, and it's a great tile if you want to feature other aspects of the room because it can be a great unassuming backdrop to things like beautiful faucets. Or a teak bench, for instance. This is especially true if you match the grout to the tile. The pattern just fades into the background, creating a beautiful, simple wall texture that envelops the room. However, if you'd like to showcase this running brick pattern, use a grout that contrasts the tile and all of a sudden it's no longer just a backdrop, it becomes a feature. Or choose a tile that is vibrant and deep in color. Not so plain Jane anymore. And it's not just popular in bathrooms, kitchens love this tile pattern too. Kitchens tend to have strong horizontal elements because of the natural lines of upper and lower cabinetry. This running brick pattern continues that feeling with simplicity. I'm loving this little touch of simplicity behind the stove. Notice the grout here accentuates the pattern. And another key feature of a running brick pattern, it's not exclusive to subway tiles, of course. Any tile that is rectangular in shape with similar proportions can be installed in a running brick pattern. Porcelain, stone, glass, marble. You can turn it 45 degrees and angle it too. Angling any pattern will make the space feel more spacious. I love this pattern, especially when spaces are small. Use a matching grout and the pattern will visually extend the space as it drops back into the background. Another of my favorite tile patterns is called stacked. Each tile is installed in line with the one below. The great thing about this installation is that even though it's pretty darn simple in terms of math, it actually offers up many different results. First off, if we go back to the very popular subway tile, it can be stacked horizontally or vertically, and that changes the way it looks in the room. I find stacking tiles vertically gives this classic tile a more modern slant. Stacking it on its horizontal edge also provides a clean grid-like pattern. I feel like the rectangular grid is more evident in a horizontal installation. I'm a fan of both, but choosing which direction should be based on whether you'd like to emphasize the length and width of the room versus its height. I love this double layer of stacked glazed tiles for a backsplash. I love the grout here too, which emphasizes this vertical pattern. Conversely, this particular green glazed tile is laid horizontally and the grout in this case is matched to the tile, creating one long horizontal band of color. So they're emphasizing the horizontal countertop and cabinets below. 
See how different the two look? Both are excellent choices, great patterns. I love a stacked tile to create a feature wall. Here it's installed vertically, bringing your attention up to the ceiling and those great pendant lights. Stack tiles don't have to be rectangular either. Let's take a look to the not so distant past when square tiles were very prevalent. Today, if you're looking for that vintage look, consider a stacked square tile. Remember when I said you'd get many different results by stacking tiles? Here we go. If you add a second color with the same tile, you've created a classic, classic floor pattern. The checkerboard. A black and white checkerboard floor is a great statement. Here, it's quite modern and fun. And magic happens when you turn the whole pattern by 90 degrees. It visually expands the space, magically. And here we're back to stacked rectangular tiles, alternating black and white colors. Now that's a major feature in this room. And finally, want some more magic? Add one more color to the mix and you can create a plaid look. It's a bit of an illusion, but it works really well. You'd think simply stacking tiles would be an easy decision. Well, there's a bit more that goes into it in the end. That's why it's one of my favorite patterns. Herringbone might just be my most favorite tile pattern. It's certainly my favorite wood floor pattern. But again, let's focus on herringbone tile. It can be installed in two ways. The classic, more traditional way is like this, where the pattern's peaks point up and down. It zigs, it zags. Traditionally, this is the way herringbone wood floors are installed. And in most cases, herringbone tile floors are installed the same way. This classic approach is beautiful in my opinion. And some would say it's too traditional, but it really depends on the tile that is being installed instead of the pattern itself. Here, this beautiful brick tile is classic. Yesterday, today, and tomorrow, it will always look great. I love the look of herringbone tiles for an entryway like this. A classic herringbone pattern visually expands the space, making it perfect for small spaces like entryways. I also love the look of slate herringbone or any natural stone herringbone because it creates this lovely modeled look on the floor. It's perfect in a mud room. Also, the longer each tile is, the more modern the overall look is. The second way to install herringbone is called a right angle herringbone where the pattern is turned 90 degrees so that there's one flat edge along the bottom. It looks more like a stepped pattern, like a set of stairs. I think it looks great when you have large spaces of wall like this. The pattern becomes quite geometric, but you lose the stepped herringbone pattern when you have smaller portions of wall. For instance, here in the base of this shower, the pattern is a little bit lost and no longer looks like a herringbone. So my preference is to stick with the classic horizontal herringbone pattern because you always get the full effect of the pattern. I also love it with different colored tiles like this. This fading of color in this pattern is both fun and unexpected. It allows for some interesting creative installations. I also love the double herringbone where the tiles are doubled up. It's a great alternative to the classic herringbone pattern. Tile installers love me. The best part of herringbone pattern is that very pleasing zigzag. It creates visual interest and movement. It's definitely not a static pattern. Those zigzags are what make it popular. This pattern was very popular in the 60s with what was called parquet wood flooring. Small blocks of wood lined up at right angles creating this woven geometric look. Today, it's making somewhat of a comeback, albeit with less gloss, perhaps. But since we're here for tile, I'm here to show you this pattern presented in tiles on both floors and walls. It's a great alternative to the other patterns we tend to see more often and that we've discussed here today. Some people call it crosshatch, some might call it a basket weave, and you might find it very easily as a mosaic tile, but I'm loving the larger scale of using full tiles to create this woven look. Here it is with your basic three inch by six inch subway tile but a two inch by six inch tile would be tripled and so forth. I think this tile pattern on walls just makes the basic rectangular tile look more interesting than a basic running bond or stacked installation. But I'm also loving this even larger scale of this pattern with floor tiles. Here, the tiles are actually porcelain tiles made to look like wood planks. 
And of course, if you're really trying to make enemies with your tile installer, that's what I'm here for. Ask them to install multiple colors in a cross hatch pattern or installing this clever pattern on the diagonal. I make friends wherever I go. And again, for my tile installer friends, I love this alternative take to the crosshatch pattern. It would look similar to this. So depending on the size and type of tile, you can really be creative with this pattern and it will definitely attract some attention. It's why it's one of my favorites. So here's your takeaway. There's no such thing as a basic tile, not when you can use math and geometry to install it in new and creative ways. Even predictable brick and stack tile patterns can be exciting and new with a change in the angle, the color, or even the direction the tiles are installed. And grout can offer up a whole new look as well. Herringbone can be doubled up, and then there's the possibilities of a crosshatch pattern. Tile installations are one of the best ways to really make a statement in your home, and it's not just about the tile. Thanks for watching my latest design lesson video. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. And if you have any design questions, let me know in the comments below, and it could be the topic of our next video. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey everyone, I've started a Patreon account. If you'd like to follow me there or become a patron, I would appreciate that very, very much. You can find the link in the description below, or you can just head over to patreon.com slash Thanks for watching and supporting my channel.